at Gillette Stadium. Ashland is the Super Bowl champion of Division VI and the winner of the Aganis Trophy. So far, it's been a rough start to the season for the Quackers. You might even say topsy-turvy. Three games in, and they only have a 20-14 win over Bellingham to show for it. But there's still plenty of football to play this season, and a shot at 500 awaits them tonight in the form of the 0-2 Apanequit Lakers. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ashland High School Football on WACA, sponsored by Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef. Alongside Rob Silver, I'm Josh Abrams. Rob, break it down for us and let us know what we can expect from the clockers tonight. Yeah, so the opponent is the Aponiquit Lakers. Aponiquit, I keep by the struggling end of the with that. <laughs> you're going to get it. No, I know. We've <laughs> practiced that 13,000 times. But uh, well, it, it, we'll, we'll see. The, the two losses, it's tough to gauge. These were top-tier teams. Whalen, they looked a little bit better in the first half, and then Whalen just kind of wore them down and grafting from the start, opening week. So I didn't get to see the Bellingham game, but I know it was a hard-fought win against a, a quality team. Uh, you look at the rosters, Aponiquit is definitely kind of short on, uh, on players, it seems, not the depth that Ashley might have. I'm expecting, and the Vegas is expecting, 13.5-point favorite Ashley, 41.5 over-under. I think it could be a route. I think people I've talked to are kind of tempering their tempering their optimism. expectations. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Yep. But I think we might see a big game out of uh, on the running uh, the running ground of uh, Kevin Ozalumba and Quan Amaral, who came alive last week, had a really nice game on the ground, and uh, I think you might see them air it out as a uh, as we get the kickoff going. Robbie Rudisil, who's uh, returning the kick here. Finds a hole, cuts to the outside. He's going still up to the 50-yard line. Best return of the year, Robbie Rudisil. I was just going to say, one of the props that you might want to look at, Robbie Rudisil <laughs> plus 220 for any touchdown. So I, I think they're going to throw to him, get him more involved in the offense. And I think, as you Robbie did Rudisil see right there, he can make some things happen. So look for uh, Robbie Rudisil. And also number four, Hugo Rossi, to uh, have a good game on the receiving end. Okay. All sounds good, Rob. And, and again, impressive return that by Robbie Rudisil. Yeah, not even the best of the season. Probably the best in the last couple of years. I don't remember a return quite that far. Yeah, it's a good start. Hand off to Ozalumba. Follows his blocks. Really patient. Gets ahead for a healthy five yards. It's weird, the change in the yardage marker. It's two different places. Off. Yeah, <laughs> like they had already gained a yard. Should be about second and five. Yeah, that's what the scoreboard has it to, second and five. They may be short on help. Okay, I, I think. Uh, okay, they got an extra body out there now, so. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, as you mentioned, Kevin did a great job on that play following the blocks. Nice and patient, found his hole, and was able to push it up there for five-yard gain here on second down. Yeah, he had a big breakout run against Bellingham, 50, I think 45 or 54 yards. I think, Ooh. oh, bad snap. Soderberg chases it down and just falls on it. Okay, that conservative was, move there. I mean, he did get a clean hop right into his hands, but. One of the other keys to the game is unforced errors. Mm. They have to avoid that. <laughs> Years past when they've been an elite team, they've been able to overcome that, but I don't feel they're at that level right now. They could get there, but they can't afford to make those type of mistakes. So what goes to a uh, second and five is now a third and 14. That was almost like a, uh, a, a punter's yeah. snap. Yeah. Yeah, wiped, up, wiped out all the yards they gained on offense. In addition to, yeah. well, you know, 10, 15 yards of uh, Rudisil's return. So they got Rossi lined up in the bright yellow cleats here to the left. He goes up top to Mermelstein, who a little miscommunication. Mermelstein was kept on running, and yeah, I think that each player had a different route in mind there. He brings up a fourth down for Ashland. So it started off so promising uh, on the return by Rudisil, has now turned into a punt situation.
perfect weather tonight. What is the... Um, the townhouse pizza townhouse and roast pizza. beef time and temperature at yeah. 6.05. Again, I think we start a little early tonight. 6.05, 72 degrees here on the plateau. Ollie LaRoe gets it off about 20 yards sideways bounce. It's Lambert uh, touching at four of the clockers. So 9.54 to go in the opening quarter. And it is uh, that, that that's our sponsor tonight, our main sponsor. That's right. Townhouse Pizza Roast Beef. It's been a while. <laughs> now, did they undergo some renovations? Is they did. My understanding is they expanded into the uh, former business next door. I, yeah, I'm assuming they've doubled their space. I haven't had a chance to uh, actually go in yet. I have driven by since they've reopened. And i uh, excited for my first roast beef from them in quite a while. Myself as well. <laughs> Big fan of their roast beef, as you know. Quarterback rolls Whoa. out. And brought down by Nick Boomer. Where's the boomer chair? You gotta hear boom. <laughs> They're not booing. Oh, I heard I heard a really good reaction from the Ashland bench though. That really energized the team. I mean, as much as uh, that that bad snap led to some real negative energy, great play there. Boomer breaks through the line, wraps up the quarterback for a huge loss. Yeah, He's gonna be second yards. and nineteen. Right, it's nine yard loss. Every time we see that number forty four, reminds me of our buddy Kerry Turner. Technoplex Healthcare, another one of our another one of our big sponsors. sponsors. Yeah. So it's Paxton Canessa handing off to number 17. We'll get the name in a moment. Get some good yardage around the corner. Evan Dupress. Evan Dupress, yeah. Junior, halfback. That's one of the things I noticed about the Aponiquit. Ross, it just flows off the tongue, by the way, the Aponiquit. I don't know why you have such a hard time with it. I, it's but easy. They're the Lakers. The Lakers. I have no problem. There you go. <laughs> uh, just, just five seniors on their roster. Mm -hmm. A lot of soft. A well, small roster, man. It's a 28-person roster to begin with. Yeah, exactly. Third and 12 here for the Lakers. Knessa hands off again, this time to number 19, who gets some great yardage. He's on the outside. He's One cutting man down to the line, and uh, Ozalumba's able to knock him out of bounds at the 26, 27-yard line. That was a nice pickup. Big run by 30 19, yards. Mm -hmm. Jolly. That was on a third and nine. Knocked out of bounds by number 23, Kevin Ozalumba. The clockers are a little bit thin uh, due to injuries. Both the O'Briens are out. Uh, Luke O'Brien got hurt in that Bellingham game. And then Devin O'Brien with an ankle injury last week. He'll be out for unknown amount of time and that definitely hurts them. De Devin is uh, quite the defensive presence. Another handoff. Procaccini. Yeah, Ozalumba able to minimize the game, a couple of yards. Joseph Procaccini, tackle by number 23, Kevin Ozalumba. So second and six for the Lakers, the clocker 24. Quarterback drop back to pass. Safe pass right across the middle. That Sean one's complete. Wonder again on the receiving end. And once again, Kevin owes a lumbo mm -hmm. who's helped pass out. Completed to number one, Sean by number Wonder 52. Green. Tackle by number 23, Kevin Ozalumba. What started looking like a really nice offensive play for the Lakers was quickly snuffed out by the Clocker defense. They stood up big that time, bringing up third and six from the Clocker 21. That would even be less third than six. Third and four to go. Oh, third Lakers. and four, thank you. I'm our friend George Good on the two. PA giving us On cue, yeah. on cue, thanks George. <laughs> four down I can only go up once off the scoreboard, Rob. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a handoff. Oh, Boomer gets pushed back. Uh, he might have even been held on that play. I <laughs> was looking for the flag. I thought <laughs> I thought the same thing. Run by Evan Dupross. But a uh, nice gain by Dupross gets the first down. And then now Tackle into the Dante Ashland. It's good for first down. Excuse players. me, the Townhouse Roast Beef. Is it Townhouse? Who's the sponsor tonight? Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef. Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef. Red Zone. <laughs> oh, gliding through the uh, the whole secondary 
And it's number 19, Brody Jolie, waltzing into the end zone for the first score of the game. Putting the Lakers up 6 nothing. Yeah, again, that, uh, that Laker size coming into play there. There were a number of clockers who kind of bounced off of that running back, and he really got in relatively easily going right up the middle, right up the gut. So 6 nothing early lead here for the Lakers. Yeah. Extra point about to come in here with 6.32 to go in the first quarter. Colin Sear for the free throw, and it's good. By and Lakers are up 7-0. 6.32 to go in the first quarter. Of course, I want to remind you folks watching on the live stream, Rob and I are keeping an eye on that live stream right on YouTube. So you're welcome to drop some comments in there if you want to uh, give a shout out to anyone or Give us some encouragement in, in announcing tonight's game for all of you. We're, we're happy to, uh, to have you here with us here on WACA. How do you get the chat? I, I can never <coughs> sign in for the chat. I well, I don't, want, I don't want you to worry about the chat. We're doing the game over here. I know, but I want to get the conversation started. <laughs> well, are you running off the browser? Are you running off the app? Um, the browser. Okay, I'm running off the app. I, that's, I can see the chat. There's a YouTube app. There is. Okay. Not to be confused with the YouTube TV app. That one I have on my TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so kicking off for the Aponiquit Lakers is number four, Nathan Sarichia, another sophomore. This one heading out of bounds. Give the clockers some unearned good field position to start. The second drive of the game. Also want to take a moment to thank uh, another one of our sponsors here tonight, Mr. Handyman of Central Metro West. Appreciate having their support here for these live streams of Ashland football on WACA. Yes, our man Michael Campbell. Had him in the booth last week. Nice, nice guy. Okay. I gotta tell you, I was thinking about that on my drive over here tonight. I mm -hmm. actually have a project for Mr. Handyman. They do it all. Central what is Central Metro it? West. He's at, authorized me to give quotes. So. <laughs> is that right? Is that right? Do I get the friend of Rob Silver discount? <laughs> hey, he was giving out. He was giving out uh, coupons last week. Okay, nice. No, but the uh, <laughs> clockers are gonna make him kick again. He goes. Alumba is hungry. He wants this. See if he gets a good bounce, he does, picks it up, finds some space, powers through a few blocks, tackles, and uh, onto the other side of the field. I feel like uh, he said, hey, Robbie Rudisil, you have a good return, I'm gonna do you one better. Yeah. So not as many yards, but the end result, clockers are gonna start on the right side of the 50. Yeah, I just feel like if, if they can get Ozalumba going. He, he could have a huge game. He had a nice run that one time and then the bad snap and mm -hmm. that was kind of it. But I think they can really throw. They get, this team's got some height. As Ozalumba takes it to the outside. Brought looked down like, for a short gain out of bounds, far end. Yeah, it looked like they might have him stop for just a one-yard game, but he was able to Kevin Ozalumba, shed the first tackler in, in yeah, three yards. Three yards. Second and seven. Okay, I saw Boomer just check in, big 44. It's certainly a number to look for every time he's on the field. Yeah, he had a uh, good receiving touchdown, I believe, in the Bellingham game. Yeah. So he's been getting more involved in the offense. We've got Rudisil at the bottom of the screen. Big height advantage. See if they get it over to him. They throw underneath to Mermelstein, who's able to pick up a first down. A townhouse pizza and roast beef first down. Move the chains and move your car on down to townhouse roast beef for some dinner. You are the master of the segue. <laughs> oh, see how Five fifteen and counting here in the first quarter. Clockers down seven nothing, but driving on the Lakers. Soderberg deep snap throws underneath to Boomer. 
Gets about a yard and a half, maybe two. He did a great job. Boomer did a great job there of securing the football. I mean, he knew he was going to get hit right away. And uh, just pulled it in, both hands, held tight. Took what he could get. Yeah, yeah. Got, yeah picked up a yard or so there, right? Couple. It was another one where the, the yardage started, the one yardage marker started a yard ahead of the chain. Okay, Soderberg and Boomer head back out to join the rest of the offense. About four and a half to go here in the first quarter. If you're watching at home, the, when, if you can see the pink cleats of Mark Marmelstein, the yellow, uh, green, and they go the other side to Marmelstein. Once again, overthrow. This time, no wind to blame it on. Last Passion week, they had the Robbie Rudisil wide open, two, three yards behind the off uh, defender. It's a really and interesting, oh, sorry, go ahead. Now, and it was just a windy day, and the pass just sailed. Nothing could do. But The interesting pattern run there between uh, Mermelstein and Rudisil, he kind of did a little crisscross, and then, uh, again, Mermelstein headed for the corner, and uh, sort of worked just a little too much, too much on that throw. So... I feel like the quarterbacks need to get a little bit more air under it, a little more loft, a little, take a little less uh, trajectory off it. This way they can catch up to it. And uh, the longer it's in the air, the better. to Amaral, huge hole. Bites down to the 26 yard line, about one yard short of the first down. It's gonna bring up fourth and one. They're in a hurry up offense, Rob. They're gonna try and draw them off sides. And they did. Wow, that was blatant. What happened there? They weren't ready for it. Uh, but 19, Brody Jolie, the touchdown score for the Lakers, just yeah. burst across the line. Was he, he just trying to guessing the snap count? Somebody didn't watch the game film because mm -hmm. that's their modus operandi. Ooh, Latin. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> you always surprise me. Usually it's math, but tonight, a little, throw a little Latin out there. Nice work, yeah. Rob. So first down for the Clockers here in the first quarter. Down 7 nothing to the Lakers. Pitch to Amaral. Bounces it. Outside, inside, five-yard game. Juan Amaral, your ball carrier. Tackle by number one, Sean Lundgren. It feels like Amaral and, Ruta and um, Ozalumba are kind of a little bit of a thunder and lightning approach, right? Just the, you know, their body styles, their running style. I was thinking the same thing, but I think I've used that every year when oh, okay. there's been two quarterbacks. So I was trying to think of uh, peanut butter and jelly or some other type of pairing. Uh, there's a yeah, I mean, guys. it's not completely out. I mean, Ozalimba no. has plenty of speed, right? But right. he's just a bigger guy. He's harder to bring down. 23, Kevin Ozalimba. Talk about number 54, Zach Menendez. Oh, but Amaral, you know, Amaral just it feels like he's got that, that first right step, right? That yeah. burst. And Ozalumba, you know, just a junior, he has definitely put on some uh, pounds in the weight room over the offseason. Timeout clockers with 2.38 to go with a third and three. Okay, fans, just a reminder, the best way to keep up with Clocker Sports is the Ashland Athletics Instagram account. Of course, that's run by uh, Ashland Athletic Director Kevin Anderson. He just does a great job with that, Rob. I'm not sure if you're it's doing the Insta app, thing. another thing that I'm not <laughs> on that I need to be on. But. Fair enough, fair enough. Also want to give a shout-out to uh, one of our new sponsors this year. This is uh, Sub-Zero Nitrogen Ice Cream and... Uh, our friend Paul Bowden, our production manager, put together a real nice, uh, real nice, I guess, you know, sponsorship video about them that uh, that folks, you stick around at halftime, you catch the video there. But uh, just a great family-owned local business, you know, relatively new to Ashland, less than a year now, and uh, already making their presence felt. Uh, you know, this is a, the nitrogen ice cream, I, I just, it's a, such a cool, cool floor show. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I was presenting it last week. Mm -hmm. It's not just. A, it's not just an ice cream treat, it's an experience. <laughs> it is. And it's 91 Main Street, right next to Town Hall. Right, exactly, right next to Ashland Town Hall. And uh, yeah, just tell them Josh and Rob sent you. And it's undergoing, not, uh, Town Hall is undergoing some renovations. That's true, that's I, true. I heard that on the WACA news blog done by my own, uh, my own daughter, Hallie Silver. Mm -hmm. Catch that for all the news. There's a pitch to Amaral. 
think he's got enough. He does. He gets uh, three and, the wrong, and a half. Only needed three, and it's a first down. First it's down. first and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Great, great effort there by Amaral. I mean, second effort, third effort, fourth effort. He just kept churning those, churning those legs. Got the first down for the clockers. Yeah, he got into a first nice rhythm last week from the Gunko offense. Mm -hmm. They haven't run that yet tonight. They just started it. And Amaral again. Oh, he's dragged oh. down by the face mask or the collar or something. Run by Quan Amaral, tackle by number 11, Joseph Procassini. Oh. Wow. Penalty huh. on the play. My bad. Now we see what we want to see, right, Ron? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't have my binoculars keyed in, but. Uh, so what for the clock stops with 1.57 to go in the first quarter. Clockers down 7 nothing to Lakers, but they are driving despite that penalty, knocking them backwards a little bit. They are still inside the Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef red zone. Yeah, first and 19 just gives them more room to throw the ball. Soderberg. Looks like he'll be under center. He's got Rudisil lined up up top. He's got Hugo Rossi down the bottom. And Boomer in the slot to the left. Rudisil in motion. He's gonna get it. He's got a shed a tackle. Can't do it. He had no help out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no blockers anywhere near Colin him on that. Sear. Did what he had to do. I'm not sure what, what the design was on that play. The design, I, I think the design is you just got to get by that one guy and then you get some room to run. But I mean, just the way, like the angle in which he took that pass, he really never had a chance to get to turned around and yeah, make a move, yeah. exactly. So under a minute to go, a clock is running. Clockers down 7 nothing as they approach the line. I, I want to see him throw a ball up. Let Rudisil oh. out jump a guy. This is about as split wide as I've seen There's the clock. Soderberg. Guns it underneath. Intercepted. One Ozumumba man to beat. Chasing him down. Terrific Great open field job. tackle. And that was Jolie. Brody Jolie who uh, scored the touchdown for Aponiquit. Tackle by Kevin Ozalumba. So Jolie doing it on both sides of the ball right now for the Lakers. He has the touchdown and it's just a huge interception with a big return there for the Lakers, snuffing out a clocker drive. I, I don't understand. First and 10 Lakers from the 40 yard line. There's such a height advantage. Both Hugo Rossi, Robbie Rudisil, basketball players, mm -hmm. good jumping mm -hmm. ability. Give, give him a chance as uh, they throw down the middle. Broken up by Linehan. Nice Linehan pass. got away with at least two different penalties on that play. No offense. I apologize. I'm, I'm not going to be a home. Oh, did we get the play? Way back here, holding. Okay. Like. But a nice throw by Canessa. Yeah, they did a nice job of kind of disguising what they were going to do there. He did have a man wide open way downfield, and... Linehan, I think, dodged a bullet there because he was he was there plenty early, <laughs> Holding penalty on <laughs> and never turned around to find the ball. Right. I don't know if he made contact though, first and other than to right after he caught the ball, but it was close. It was scary. But after the holding penalty, it's first and long, and just huge gaps mm -hmm. in the. Defensive line. One by uh, 17, Evan, Evan Dupas. Dupas. Okay, yeah. that just the size advantage on the line the Lakers have right now. You know, so kind of a delay like handoff. Hand. The blockers, the defensive line, sorry, the offensive line has a chance to set set up, get their blocks in place, spring them for a big game. Second down yeah, here. And that's the gonna that's gonna run out the first quarter, so we'll give uh, Coach McKay a chance to talk to his team and figure out a that's game plan. Maybe motivate them. Okay, well, at the end of the first quarter, clockers down 7 nothing to the Lakers. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back for second quarter action here on WACA. Pink quarter. It's a run to the outside. Coming up to make the tackle for Ashland. Run Nick Boomer. 20, Elijah Barlow. 
Talk about number four, Hugo Rossi. And Hugo Rossi. Brings up a third and one for Aponiquet. So it was a what was a first and long for Aponiquet after holding penalty is now third and one. Somebody's got to step up for the defense on Ashland and make something happen. Marmelstein got 19, into the backfield, but Holly, good for a first down. No help. Talked by number 18, Jake Linehan. Did I say, when I said the uh, the line was 4, 13 and a half, did I actually say who was favored? Yes. Let's go to the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little surprised. A one and two team getting a double digit oh, versus favorite. Oh, and two, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had heard some nine and a halfs around. Mm -hmm. Wow. Five yards Run before any contact at all. Okay, so Jolie continuing to chew up yards against the Clockers. Has the has the touchdown. That has Lakers up seven nothing. Big interception to set up this drive here. Continues to gain yards here on the series. And Rob, just a heads up. Uh, kind of quiet. Mine. Kind of quiet on the uh, on the chat from our Ashland fans, but. Uh, one of our one of the Laker dads, I'm guessing, is uh, throwing you some shade right now. Somebody, sh what what's going on? Hand off to number one, Sean Lundgren, one up the Caleb Procassini, who I I'm guessing is related to Joseph, number eleven, sophomore, throwing you a little shade about Jolie not watching the tape. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten from the fifteen yard line. Didn't have to watch tape for that interception. <laughs> Fair and enough. He's uh, a Poniquit team. Came ready to play. Mm -hmm. Love, I love the uh, love the talking smack. Sure. Nice hand up there, Jolie again. Headed for the corner. Running all over this team. Clocker secondary able to force him out of bounds. Number 19, deep. Brody Jolly. But it will be first and goal here for the Lakers. For From the two yard line. Gonna have to check with our technical crew to see if they can put an upset alert box up on the uh, corner of the screen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, Procaccini, you'll chime First in and say this is no upset. Yard line. It, was, it was just a bad line from the beginning. So we were talking about the MIA rankings. The Poniquet mm -hmm. uh, Division 5 ranked number 18 at 0 and 2. Ashland Division 4 ranked number 23 coming into tonight's game. Those uh, rankings just came out this morning. Uh, there was a fumble, and it looks like been a Some long discussion. discussion on the field about it. I yeah. saw Hugo Rossi raise his hands. Oh, it fumbled out of wow. the end zone. So a touchback. Huge Beautiful. break for the Clockers. And speaking of huge breaks, I see Kerry Turner posting here that uh, Kerry's here on YouTube with us. So Kerry, glad to have you with us tonight. Clockers down 7 nothing, but avoided... What appeared to be a surefire touchdown. One of the most frustrating plays for an offensive team to fumble out of the end mm -hmm. zone. But we were on defense, so we will take it. Absolutely. So, yes, I mean, so far, I mean, it's Could really turn been the their season around. Yeah. yeah. You think that's the one? That's the place to turn it all around right here. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get you in. heard it here first. We 80, definitely have that one on tape. 80 yard play right here. <laughs> Even up the game. Kerry Turner, I hope you've been watching the whole game. We've mentioned your name. Nick Boomer, your old number 44, having a solid game. Not sure where the ball went. I think it went to Quan Amaral. A lot of deception. Atherton had the handoff there and then quickly jogs off. Yeah, it was Amaral. Amaral on the run. 
minimal gain. 9.07 to go in the second quarter. Ashland trailing 7 nothing, but just avoided a, another offensive uh, barrage by Aponiquit as they fumbled going into the end zone, and it went out of the end zone for a touchback, so Ashland signs a life. Atherton calling for the ball. Rudisil in motion. He rolls out. Throws over to Mermelstein, who's able to hold on. Definitely didn't hit the ground. No, he he he, he juggled it a little bit on the way juggled down, it but he never bit. touched. Atherton. So great effort by Mermelstein there. Yeah, good concentration. That was a heck of a throw because that was tight coverage. I mm -hmm. thought he was going to go underneath. I think it was I agree. I, that's, that's where I thought he was going too. And I'm like, ooh, is he getting a little greedy? But Mermelstein made it work. So. Clock continues to run. 8.20 to go in the second quarter. Clockers down 7 nothing, but a first down at their own 38. Yeah, after that 16-yard pass play from Atherton to Mermelstein underneath the Ozalumba. Breaks a tackle. He's got some room. Nobody in front of him. He 30, is gone. 20, 10. Touchdown, Kevin, the Wizard of Oz, owes a lumbar to make it seven to six. No flags on the play. Ben Atherton, pass to number 23. It Kevin goes in the Lumba. books as a 62 yard pass and touchdown, touchdown from Ben Atherton. Interesting, I mean, I feel like that was a kind of a similar p pattern that we saw Rudisil struggling with going down, the, going down the field in the first quarter, but ball got out to Olympa pretty quickly. He was able to make that turn, make that first deke, and then he was gone. Yeah, it looks like Ashland's gonna go for two. Their normal uh, kick, kicker is injured. And the sophomore filling in. Not 100% as Atherton's able to power ahead. Wow, where's the goal line cam? It's not gonna give it, not gonna get it. Ben Atherton, the quarterback keeper, the two point conversion is no good. Okay, so with exactly eight minutes to go on the half, Clockers down seven to six, but fresh off a terrific touchdown, Atherton to Ozalumba, 62 yards. And again, makes it seven to six here in the second quarter. Yeah, and you, like you said, it was very similar to the play to Rudisil, difference being that he hit him in stride. Mm -hmm. I, it seemed almost like when Rudisil caught it, he had to come back for it and yep. then turn around, and, and he just didn't have time to make a move, where Ozalumba caught it in stride, was able to just power over the uh, defensive back. And like you said, he's the lightning, and just bolted up the sideline. Actually, I had him in Wars the Thunder, but it's okay. <laughs> he was showing some lightning on that run, that's for sure. Isn't, isn't lightning faster than thunder? But you know, thunder's powerful when it hits right. you. But I thought we said Amaral was the power guy. I thought Amaral was the lightning guy. He had the burst of speed. We'll have to check them out on the 40-yard uh, <laughs> dash. I think Go for the uh, onside kick. Kick recovered by Aponiquid at the 49 yeah. yard line. No number, uh, not on the roster, number 50. So our apologies for not giving him his props for. Well, maybe they have 29 the players on the roster. <laughs> So the Lakers are going to start here first and 10 at their own 49 with 7.59 to go in the half. They're up 7-6. to six. They're ready to go. See if uh, Ashley can build up this momentum. They fake it over to number one. They ru runs wide. Gang tackle there that Sean Lundergan. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're giving up some yards on the run, but, they are, but they are tackling with volume. <laughs> So yeah, Lundgren on the carry there for, for a few. I want to give a quick shout out to another one of our sponsors, 126 Storage here in Ashland. They're right on Pond Street, local, family owned and operated. We've got kind of a theme going here with our Ashland businesses, our sponsors. Well, they have a wide range of storage units. They can also store cars, boats, and RVs. Check their website for special offers and coupons. 
Nicely done. Good timing there. <laughs> Number 17. Block in the back. Dupris gets to the outside. Picks up about 10, 11, 12 yards. But there's a flag Number down at the 41. Evan Dupras. Forced out of bounds by number 14, Corey Paddleford, but. That could be why he got to the outside. Good eyes by my partner, Josh Abrams. Oh, I saw 52, Lucas Tremblay. And I called it as a block in the back, I and mean, he just leveled the guy right in front of him. But I'll take a holding call against the Lakers. I was trying, I was looking at the roster, trying to remember who uh, number 17 was. I missed the, mm -hmm. the laundry. So again, it's a spot foul. It's a holding call, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So it brings it back to the original line of scrimmage and it'll be second, should be second and 10, wasn't it? That'll bring up a second and 10 yep. for a point of weight. They've got to flip the yardage marker, the, uh, the down marker, which they did. The orange cleats, Kevin Ozalumba. Like I was saying before, the bright green, if you can see that, or yellow is uh, Hugo Rossi mm -hmm. and Mark Marmelstein. Parnassus rolls out to his right, and, and it's it intercepted. <laughs> is that Jake Linehan? Yeah, it was Jake Linehan. Ball, yep. Jake Linehan. Big play for Jake there. Terrific job as uh, the Laker quarterback rolled right, threw into some heavy coverage. And if it wasn't Linehan, there was another clocker right beside him. Yeah. So a big turnover there by the clockers. And we'll remember that play maybe that turned the season around. <laughs> Going to be dining out on that prediction. <laughs> Clockers ball, first and 10 at the 50. <clears throat> so Atherton in again under center. And the Clockers do use the two different quarterbacks, Atherton, the junior, Soderberg, the senior. But right now it feels like McKay's ri riding the hot hand, Atherton. Yeah, right. Who threw the interception? Uh, there's a run to Ozalumba, met by three of the Aponica Lakers, five yards deep for a loss. Yeah. Guess the Lakers saw the tape on that play. They were all over him. Tackle for a six-yard loss. It was the interception. I thought Soderbergh threw the interception. But we'll check that out. They have to verify. Sure. I just, uh, I, I'm not dwelling on it. Sure. Just, but that could be the reason why he's going back to Soderbergh. Fans, just a reminder, if you're coming out for a game later this season, don't forget to order your tickets online before you get here. Tickets are $5 each, and you can order on GoFan.co. That's GoFan.co. So as we mentioned, Soda, we're back under center. Shotgun. Drops back to pass. There's the high one. A little too far. Intended for Rudisil. Just not Rudisil giving him a chance to get under it. Yep. Yeah. But what's Plenty of arm strength. I mean, definitely. I was just going to say, what's amazing, <laughs> it looked like it was just a flick of the wrist. Mm -hmm. But it just, just need a little bit more finesse. Let him have a chance to run under. Let him it. use that speed, absolutely. He definitely had his man beat down the side, down, the, you know, down that near sideline. And I feel like at this level, if you throw the ball short, there's a 50%, 75% chance that if your receiver sees it first, you're going to get a penalty. You're going to get the defensive pass interference. Just got to give him a chance. So it's third and 15. See if they come back to that. They go the other side. Ozalumba, who sheds another block. All that effort, he just got past the original line of scrimmage for this drive. Yeah, it was eight yards. I mean, that looked like that screen pass looked like it was he was going to get dropped for a loss. But yeah, that first tackler just bounced off him. That would be the thunder part. Bring up a fourth and, eight for <laughs> and Kevin turned into a real nice game, but again, it brings up a fourth down right around midfield. Clockers look like they're going to go for it here. Atherton in at quarterback. I think you, ha you have to go for it. He may try and draw him offsides to get another five out of it. 
initially with a hard count, but you definitely got to go. That was a little bit in motion. I think you're right, Rob. I think they're trying to drive them off sides. Doesn't work. They take the timeout. So. Fool me once. Yeah. Shame now they're watching the something. tape. Exactly five minutes to go here in the half. Clockers down 7 6, but with the ball right around midfield. What are the odds of stopping right at the even minute mark? It's happened a couple times tonight. It's yeah. been very surprising. What are the odds? I, you're Mr. Vegas. So you tell well, me. It's a simple math question. How many <laughs> seconds in a minute? Uh, 60. Right. So isn't it 60 to 1? Or uh, 1 you, in 60? You, you folks chime in. It's it a might lot be, of math there. That me, might be 60. Is it 60 to 1 or 64 to 1? There's a big difference. <laughs> While we have this time out on the field, I want to give a shout out to our crew tonight. Always doing a great job for us. So Luis Miranda, Nick Cunningham, Mackie Kotob, Brady Montecito, Jeff Hall, Paul Bowden. Appreciate you guys. And of course, uh, Mackie, we got to go with uh, the Mac attack. Ollie LaRoe, back to punt, good snap. No nice pressure and punt. nice kick. See if they let it bounce, beautiful roll. Down to the nine, maybe the eight yard line. Joel is showing some moves there to get out of the way of that crazy bouncing football. 40 yard uh, net punt, huge. Another great break there for the clockers as the Lakers will start with their worst field position of the night inside their own 20. That'll be first and 10 for a Pontiquit from their nine yard line. Nine yard line, 39 yard net punt. So Canessa fakes twice. Oh, he's got, oh, oh, a beautiful throw to Colin Sear just past the outstretched jump of Ozalumba. You're not kidding about Colin just Sear. over the outstretch. I don't know how he was able to sneak it just over his fingertips. So Lakers already just with one play out of trouble. Out. Yep, go ahead. No, 23 yards on the play. Four and a half and counting to go in the half. You just said half twice in three words. Oh, a huge goal, gaping hole, excuse me. And Jolie, Jolie again. Run up the middle by number 19, Brody Jolly. Tackle by number 23, Kevin Ozalumba. So Jolly gets it over midfield, Laker down. first down. Yeah, you think it, it must be Jolly because George probably. George probably checked, it. yeah. Yeah. First and 10 from the He's a professional. Yard line. At least he acts professionally. He has more time than we do. Sure, sure. But professional nonetheless. So 42 yards on two plays gets it back into Ashley and territory for the Lakers. As Knessa looks over to the sideline. He's got Joseph Procaccini behind him, hands it off to him. Push him, push the pile, push the pile. Four yard gain. One by number 11, Joseph Parcassini. Up the middle for a gain of four. Tackle by number 23, Kevin Ozalumba. Procaccini just one of many sophomores playing on that Aponiquit roster. Mm -hmm. This portion of Ashland football brought to you by Techniplex Healthcare. Great company right here in Ashland. Jolly again. On the carry, eight, eight yards and a first Jolly. down. Good for another Aponiquit first down. As the clock ticks under three minutes, 2.56 to go here in the first half with the Aponiquit Lakers leading our Ashland clocker seven to six here on WACA TV. Rob Silver and Josh Abrams. Good job this time by Ashland. Able to bring down Lundergan for a minimal gain. Yeah, defense, the right defense was called there. They were waiting for him as he tried to come around the far end. Gain of one. Mermelstein 
coming to the sideline, and in comes number 89. Haven't seen him much, Isaiah Early. Lakers head to the Lions. The clock approaches two minutes to go in the first half. Canessa hands off to 17, and a nice tackle by Quan Amaral. First tackle for a loss of the night, I believe. Two yards. No, they loss. had that, that huge sack. That huge Except breakup in the very first Just play of the game. Thank you. Thank you, my short term Kevin memory. <laughs> hey, Tony Randall. <laughs> Big Ben <band> Powell. <laughs> Bring up a third and 10 for a point of quit. Okay, clockers need a big stop here. Third and 10 for the Lakers. Drive might be stalling. Jolly on the handoff. Cuts back and able to get 11 yards. Needed 10. First down. Clock down 19. to 117 to go. Announcer jinx strikes Jolly. again. 12 yard gain. Tackle Boy, they have a lot of confidence in Jolly to. Third and ten to hand it to him, down. knowing they're you know, expecting him to get the first. Yeah, I think they were planning on running it again four on down fourth territory. down, yeah, yeah. but only needed the one. So clock ticking down a minute, 59 seconds to go now. Under a minute. 57. Take your time. Take your time. Canessa looking over to see her again. Good, oh, beautiful catch by Daniel Sear. Colin Sear, excuse me. Great coverage. Colin Sear. But he just out jumped him, and that's what From I'm talking about. It, but that's the kind of pass you've been expecting the clockers to throw all night. You give yourself, you give your receiver, the athletic guy, some a chance to out jump your defender. Looked like that was number 14, Corey Paddleford on the coverage there, and he got turned around, he saw the ball the whole way, just could not elevate enough to break up the pass. I think he was almost a little too focused on trying to intercept it, and uh, should have been a little more, more yeah, I feel focused like, on uh, breaking up the pass. Yeah, it looked like he had eyes on the ball before the receiver did. Jolly up the middle, and just short as they went for the two-point conversion. Well, Marmelstein's calling it a no, no, good. no good, and he is correct. So a nice big stop there. Mm -hmm. So Keeps it's still it. yeah, yeah. one-score game. Yes. Well, I guess it would have been one score either way. Six. No, it would have been 15 15, six? you're right. Again, one math big is, score. Math is not my <laughs> <laughs> One big score. <laughs> banana, banana ball, maybe. Right, you know, right, right. Got a nine-point touchdown somehow. <laughs> just run backwards. So. Clockers looking to try and do something here with 43.4 seconds to go in the first half. They are down 13 to six. Yeah, they have the potential to, we've seen it for a big play as mm -hmm. they did show, show us on the 62 yard pass play. So if they can get a decent return here and both Robbie Rudisil and Ozalumba are both capable. Might see Coach McKay roll the dice and Look for something big. So, Nathan Sereccia planting the ball on the tee. And Nick Boomer, number 44, and number 55, the upbacks for Josh Lambert, in case they try a squib kick of some sort, as they did. And way up. Braden Freels with that catch. Kickoff fielder by number 10, Braden Freels. So 41 seconds to go. I, I'm looking at your face, Robin. Well, I. I I mean, he <laughs> caught it so clean, and he had 10, 15 yards. I get the trying to conserve the time, but I think 10, 15 yards or might that, have been a little bit That more. very easily could be a coaching decision. He oh, yeah, it oh, definitely was a coaching decision, no doubt about it. He Clockers come out in the gunk formation. Almost looks like the, the, they're going to... Kneel it. Yeah, I think they were just trying to fake everyone out. Oh, they did fake everyone out. 
And it's Friels. That's Friels. Friels. There's your reward. But that's also a little bit of uh, inexperience as well. I was expecting him to cut it to the sideline and get out of bounds to save the timeout. But yeah. a huge gain for Friels there on first down. A little trickery from McKay. Play took 12 seconds, 29.6. Clock stops as they move the chains. And... And the, and the clockers do take the timeout. Gives them a few chances to throw it in the end zone for one of their big guys. Or throw something Ashland. underneath. What do we got? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, this portion of Ashland football brought to you by Mr. Handyman of Central, Central Metro West. Another one of our great sponsors here on WACA. Another terrific local family-owned business here in Ashland. Gonna bring up a first and 10 from the did he, did he leave you a card? I mean, I, I can always look him up on the web. But, uh, you know, I have to call him about doing, doing, maybe doing a job at my house. Yeah, what do you, what do you got to do? Yeah, uh, yeah, we got, yeah, we have that back deck, right? And on the staircase over the summer, uh, the railing for the deck came off. Ah. So, again, duct tape is a wonderful thing. It's doing the job. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. But, no, but no, I'd perfect like to. I'd like a cleaner solution than duct tape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll have to go visit before you get that fixed. Maybe <laughs> somehow. Atherton, back to pass. He's got Rossi to the left. Good defense by uh, Sereccia to break it up, but at least it gave him a chance. Mm -hmm. The play took six seconds. So second down, I mean, they, you know, they got the downs, they got the time, 23 and a half seconds to go. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage there on the left side. I was targeting Rossi, you said, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's a smart play. He hasn't really been as involved in the offense tonight, so maybe, uh, maybe the Lakers have forgotten about him there. See if they try the same thing. Good protection. They throw it up Over to Rudisil. Rudisil, I think, was trying to draw a little pass interference there. Yeah, it was uncatchable. That was the problem. Complete. Again, it just seems like the quarterback and the receiver were running, thinking different routes on that play. Right, Rudisil kind of cut it short, came across the middle, and the ball just Rudisil. sailed way over his head. So 18 and a half seconds to go now, third and 10. Good job by the offensive line to give Atherton some time to throw the ball. And Elena Vision as well. So, as you said, third, third and 10. Dialing up some protection here in the backfield. Bringing a lot, it's Rudisil. There's, there's the flag, where's the flag there? Just holding him up the whole time. I know, uh, really surprising. There was definitely contact early. We have a fourth and ten for Ashley. I want to see this replay. Go for it. I can't see it. It's too small. But it just looked like he was running to the ball and had to run through the defender. So that's going to bring up fourth down now. Fourth and ten for the clockers. 11.9 seconds to go. Maybe you get, maybe you get Rossi to tip it to somebody. Boomer comes out, Rudisil comes out, Rossi, Marmelstein, yeah. and Big Jake Linehan. Give uh, Linehan a shot, maybe, mm -hmm. the top of the screen. He got oh. hit as he let it go, and that's intercepted. This could be a problem. Ozalumba's got him measured. Huge touchdown saving tackle with three and a half seconds to go. Um, honestly, I don't know that Ozalumba gets enough credit for his tackling. He's made a couple of just terrific open field tackles tonight for the clockers. I agree with you a hundred percent. Three and a half seconds to go. Clockers down 13-6, but a costly interception there on what started as a promising drive late in the first half. Lakers will get another shot. Yeah, one yeah. shot, I think, at the end zone here. Yeah, and costly to some degree. It was fourth down. They were up against the clock, so it wasn't like they uh, 
you know, ruined a promising drive. They never, it was never really a high percentage option. But Canessa. Time has run out. out. Strip it. Oh. <laughs> Here's their third tackle for a loss. That's going to put them under on the uh, total yards. <laughs> so Mermelstein comes up big there at the end of the half. So that'll do it here in Clocktown. Clockers down 13 to 6 as we head into the half. And Rob, any, any thoughts before we uh, turn things over? Yeah, they just got to figure out this offense and play just a, a little cleaner. Um, and they got to figure out defense. It's just They just don't seem to be gelling. Uh, so we'll see. The uh, Coach McKay is the master of the halftime locker room speeches. So now, are we going to have a camera in there tonight, or or no? No, we're focused on uh, the Ashland cheerleaders. Uh, it looks like we have a have a really nice performance here at halftime. The cheerleaders are dealing, uh, you know, performing with some of the junior cheerleaders. I think so. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Hopefully, we can film this and bring this to you. And um, we'll be back the second half in about 10, 15 minutes. You're watching Ashland High School Football on WACA. Technoplex Healthcare leverages its world-class materials, science knowledge to deliver better patient outcomes by designing and manufacturing products that allow for less invasive procedures, reduce pain, enable faster healing, and safer drug delivery. Technoplex Ashland is once again proud to support the 2024 Ashland High football team and its coverage. Have a great season and... 126 Self Storage is located at 162 Pond Street and is owned by Ashland native Michael Kane. Gated and fenced with 24-hour security cameras, they offer convenient drive-up storage units for both your residential and commercial needs. Temperature-controlled units and outdoor vehicle, boat, and RV storage is also available. Check them out at 126selfstorage.com. And thank you to Michael Kane for being a great underwriter for WACA's coverage of Ashland High School football games. Welcome to Sub-Zero, the original liquid nitrogen ice cream store and home of the Cocker Crunch. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Townhouse. Pizza, subs, roast beef, and more. Be sure to fill up with the Buffalo Chicken Calzone. It's been called one of the best in the area. Located at 300 Elliott Street in Ashland, give them a call at 508-881-3010 or find them on the web at townhousepizzaroastbeef.com. WACA TV's coverage of tonight's game is sponsored in part by Mr. Handyman, the home improvement professionals. They're your one call solution for a wide range of home maintenance and repair needs performed by fully insured technicians. Located right here in Ashland at 200 Butterfield Drive, give them a call at 508 231 4639 or request service at mrhandyman.com. For second half action here at the Plateau, William Kunis Field, Ashley and Clockers trailing 13-6 to the Aponiquet Lakers, kicking off Ollie LaRoe. Squib kick fielded nicely by Procaccini. Tries to cut it outside, and he does. Fumble, ball's loose, and the Clockers got it. Procaccini trying to do just a little too much. And it's not the clocker's ball, or 
Seems to be a little confusion. 50, excuse me, 80, 56 has it. Almost like uh, 56 picked it up after uh, it was hand intercepted on the handoff to the ref. Ryan O'Connor never giving up for the Lakers, able to retain possession. The Lakers do dodge the bullet. I have to, I was looking at the comments and uh, somebody, uh, and uh, Canessa Jolly picking up where he left off, seven yard gain. That was a uh, comment about the free throw comment. The free throw comment was for the one point on the, the, the extra, extra point. point. Yep. It was a Lakers reference. <laughs> That's all. It was just a Lakers. We're, we like to keep it light here. Hey, have a little fun. fun. We almost had a third person on the mic today uh, doing the field commentating, but something suddenly came up. And do you remember? Here's a little trivia going back <laughs> to the 70s. There's a pitch. Big hit right at the game. line. No gain. Gavin Jones. Delivering the punishment. Do you remember the sitcom where that line became fa famous? Something suddenly came up. I mean, I know. Is I'm, it Three's Company? No, no. Earlier, early 70s. MASH? No, no. I, I, I have to. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman? No, but you're really going deep, <laughs> in, the, deep in the well. <laughs> I was a TV major in college. Okay. Oh, another nice tackle in the backfield. TFL. Number 24. Is that a Lambert? Is that one of the Lamberts? Yep. Malachi Lambert. So fourth and four. First decision of the night for the Pontiquet Lakers. Ball spotted at their own 47. Fourth down. Clock running to 10 minutes Ashley to go is, in the third quarter. Yeah. Jolly's coming off the field. But at least they're not trying to draw him off sides unless they run up to the line and try and do a quick snap. Ashley's got to make sure they stay disciplined. Nothing silly here. And they take a delay a game. Or do you move? Start offense. Wow. Maybe that changes the play now. <laughs> well, they were punting anyways, but the nice thing about it, instead of fourth and four, which puts you in that little uh, yellow zone for a five-yard penalty, it's now fourth and nine. So even if they did something silly with the offsides, not going to be catastrophic. Ooh. High snap. Handled nicely by, I think it's 55, his new ski. And it takes a clocker bounce. Clockers end up with some really good field position for their first drive of the second half. Yeah, so it looked like they might have a turnover on the opening snap, getting the ball on the 43-yard line of uh, Pontiquit. They end up holding after a nice first down run by Jolly. And now they're going to take over on their 43-yard line, trailing 13-6. All right, back to the trivia, because people, <laughs> I'm sure they're at mentioning it anybody anybody nope not the, yet the you're stumping the pole you're stumping everybody something suddenly came up the brady bunch wow the marsha the nose effort uh episode is i thought you were going in an entirely different direction kevin there. ozalumba going in a few different directions there as well five yards she broke her date with charlie and she said something suddenly came up, and then the football, the nose, oops, my nose, blah, blah, blah. And then... My nose, my nose, I definitely remember that. Then the other guy said the same, used the same line on her as Ashley and back to the gunk offense. Pitched to Ozalumba, cut back, swung down. Sharp cut by Kevin there. Another five yards and a first down. I mean, I could go really deep with the Brady Bunch trivia. Sure. Who was the guy that she was going to go out with, the college guy that she broke the date, and then he broke the date with her? Who was the college guy? I don't know. 
course you don't know. You didn't even know it was the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Let the viewers chew on that. Who broke the date after Marsha's nose got hit by the football? Atherton fakes. He's going to throw. He's got room. Mermelstein. Just a little too long. Been waiting for that one mm -hmm. all year. It's the first time all year they've thrown out of the gunk offense. Well, I do want to mention you. We we're talking about our YouTube audience, and we are getting live comments here on the chat. And uh, just to let you know, Molly B27, we see you there. And I uh, want to give a big shout out to Kerry Turner for uh, defending our honor here on the live stream. Kerry, of course, is a member of uh, Techniplex Healthcare here in Ashland. Protecting us online and in the healthcare Protecting field. our reputation and our health. There's a lumbar on the pitch. Fighting for yards, picks up uh, six, six yards maybe. Yeah, maybe five, so uh, scoreboard says three. It's definitely more than three, so it's third and, th uh, third and five. Okay. Those has got something hanging uh, from his back. Quan Amaral finds a hole. It's going to be real close. Fourth and one. No doubt that they are going for it here. A long one. It's to Ozalumba. He's got room. For a moment there, it looked like he was going to get tackled for a loss, but he turned into positive yards and a first down here for the Clockers. Needed to get to the 38, 37. He got to the 35. So a nice methodical drive here to start their first second half possession. Clockers trailing 13-6. Another pitch to Ozalumba. Looking for room. Finds a little space. Trying to get a push from the team. Another five yards. Yeah, he cut that back into a gap in the middle of the line. Nice gain there for Kevin. He's certainly getting a share of the yards tonight. Seven more plays like that. Five yards at a clip, and we're in the end zone. Six more. That's 30 already. Nick Boomer. Pitch to Amaral. Little bit of room. Making the most of what he's been given. First down. Six yards. Tonight's Ashland Clocker game on WACA is brought to you by Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef. Off 126 in Ashland, freshly open after a big renovation. Go ahead and check them out when you get the chance. Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef in Ashland. So if it's not thunder and lightning, what other? I'm trying. <laughs> I told you, I don't. I don't think they're gonna go with the peanut butter and jelly. It's probably not uh, the right combo. Amaral again on the high toss. Riding his blockers. Oh, a fumble. Game. Ball was loose. And it is covered by the Lakers. Yeah, another promising Ashland drive ends in turnover. So clock stops at 5.15 to go in the third quarter. Clockers down 13 to six. Lakers will take over at their own 13. 14. I see Kerry Turner desperately trying to come up with the answer to your trivia question, Rob. And Kerry, the beauty of you know, watching this game at home is you've got access to the internet. Go look it up. We I won't tell anybody. Yeah, actually, Kerry, go, <laughs> go look it up. Who was it that Shot Marsha down after after the broken nose or the swollen nose. 
I'll give you. I'll give you the. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Initials are D S. D S. I still can't remember, but I'm sure he was groovy. I'm sure he was, <laughs> and and fire out. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Vanessa pitches to Jolly. So Rob, now that you're getting into some pop culture and some trivia, I feel like it, it's a natural time to bring up tonight's dad joke of the game. I, I was thinking of that today. We missed that. We missed it. <laughs> um, do you want to wait to the next play? Just because I'll I, give you I the question of, now, and you can oh, think about yeah, it. How's yeah, yeah. that? I okay. didn't know it was a quiz. Yeah. What is a football player's favorite ice cream? Clocker Crunch. That's, That's a great guess. Brought to you by, of course, Sub Zero Ice Cream here in Ashland, home of the Clocker Crunch. All right, football but that players, is not the I, correct I answer. Oh. All right. <laughs> Those of you at home, feel free to chime in here. Oh, a nice tackle just couldn't hold on and uh, first down for the Lakers, the result of that play. Slow to get up on the tack after the tackle, Sean Lundrigan. Okay, we've got a timeout on the field, so Rob. Little injury on the play. Your chance here again to uh, come up with, your, with the answer. Football player's favorite ice cream. Yeah. The only football joke I know ends with the uh, get the quarterback as the punchline. <laughs> um, I don't know. Any given Sunday. Oh! <laughs> and that uh, dad joke of the, dad the, joke game of the day brought to you by... I'm not sure if they want to take ownership of it, but it would be brought to you by Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef. So, Jeff, just want to make sure we've got, like, a wide shot of the field, maybe of the A scoreboard as uh, injured players being tended to on the field. We'll take a moment here, of course, to thank uh, a couple more of our sponsors, including Mr. Handyman of Central Metro West. Again, we'll have to get him on the horn real soon for that, for that job I got on my back deck. And uh, Rob, we'll go ahead. Yeah, no, um, but Mr. Handyman, a couple different phone numbers, but 508-591 as uh, 3627. MrHandyman.com forward slash central dash Metro West as Lendrigan, the injured Aponica player, able to get off the field on his own accord. So that's good to see. And we are back to the game, third and two, excuse me, first and ten after Lendrigan's first down run. Nessa hands off to Jolie. Clockers definitely look like they've made some adjustments. They've been limiting him. Mm -hmm. yep. Looks like a favorable spot. Now, the spot was on the 29-yard line. The down marker was on the 30. There he goes. Yeah, looks like uh, Malachi Lambert kind of jogged off a little bit of a limp. He's being tended to on the sideline. Maybe just a cramp there. They're stretching him out. Back to the action at hand. 2.55 and counting to go in the third quarter. Clockers down 13-6. to six. Lakers with the ball. And just when you think you have Jolly figured out, yeah. he breaks one for 21 yards up to the 50 yard line. He was just shedding tacklers all the way down the field. This 49. Okay. Just a quick programming note, everybody. Clockers football next game will be at Norwood on Thursday. Then they're back home and on WACA, 6 p.m. start time, Friday, October 25th. Rob and I will both be with you for that one. First down, the Lakers leading 13-6. Rolling out, Mermelstein chasing them down. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. There should be a flag. 
head ref is looking is he looking back at the sideline. He's checking it out. They're going to have a little chat about this one. Didn't have a receiver in the area. You'll be happy to know that Kerry Turner did, in fact, come up with There's the There's the flag. Doug Simpson? Doug Simpson. Good job, Kerry. I'm sure you didn't look that up on the web, but good job. Thanks we for We appreciate playing. it. Thanks for playing. <laughs> I should know those things. I should not know those things, but I do. I mean, I can tell you which monkey was on Brady Bunch. Oh, Davy Jones. <laughs> Girl. I can tell you the name of the dog. Wasn't that the song? I'm telling you, girl, something unknown to me makes you what you are. And what you are is all that. Why would I know that many words? I don't know, but I think we just found a clip that's going to make it onto the end of season clip show. <laughs> what other famous uh, celebrities uh, do you remember from Brady Bunch? Well, let's go back to Knessa. This is a big play. Second and 20 after the penalty. It's a blitz! Oh, a huge, huge sack. Is that Linehan? Yeah. No, uh, 89. That's the, uh, the sophomore. Isaiah, Isaiah Early. Oh, uh, Junior, excuse me. Yeah. Isaiah Early with the clocker crunch brought to you by Sub-Zero Ice Cream of Ashland. Nicely done. Third and 20 now for the Lakers after it that was, huge play by Early. It's actually third and 27. They, didn't, they, didn't they, haven't, up, yeah, they haven't updated the scoreboard yet. <laughs> Definitely giving the Lakers something to think about here after Early broke through the line. Brought that quarterback down hard. I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of celebrities on Brady Bunch back in the day. That was the place to be as Jolly gets stopped for a minimal game, bringing up fourth and forever. And the punting unit as we tick under a minute to go in the third quarter. Gavin Jones, the lead tackler on that play. Great defensive effort there by the Clockers. It's still a one score game as we're into the final mid of the third quarter. Back deep for the clockers is Kevin Ozalumba. And the punter, Kenneth Wisniewski, the fourth. Nice snap this time. Good, yeah, good uh, sideways punt. Gets Quite a, a roll, too. Don't touch, don't touch, yeah, touch. heck of a roll. All the way down to the 14-yard line. Are we sure this field isn't tilted downhill that way? Holy cow, that was a roll. Yeah, 36, 51 yards. 4.3 seconds to go in the third quarter. Clockers down 13 to 6, but take over following this punt. Do you remember uh, the Joe Namath episode on Brady Bunch? <laughs> I mean, people are watching fire off. The I remember sword. Joe Namath being on the Brady Bunch, but I got to tell you, it's probably been at least 10 years since I've seen an original episode of the Brady Bunch. I've probably seen the movies more recently than I've seen the TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Come on, come on. I enjoyed the all movies, the cameos in the movie. Yeah, the movies were well done. Atherton, pitch to uh, Ozalumba. Who Bounce. breaks it outside? He's got one guy to beat, and I think he's going to beat him. Kevin Ozalumba looking to take it 86 yards, and he does. The Wizard of Oz does it again. His first touchdown was more than 60 yards. This one, 86 yards. Boy, that play started innocently enough, Rob. It looked like he was going to get stopped for a short gain and suddenly just shed a couple of tacklers and he was gone down the near sideline. So the clockers now trailing 13 to 12. We'll see if they bring in the extra, the extra point unit or the two point conversion. And they're a little short in the kicking department for this game. So yeah. if, if uh, Aaron Wolf was healthy, it would certainly be the. Uh, the extra point attempt, but they're going to go for two. Atherton under center. 
Amaral. rolls out. Yeah, pitches to Amaral, still fighting, still fighting. No good. Denied. What a gritty game by both these teams. I believe that's a combined three failed two-point conversions tonight, Rob. And I, I, both of them within feet, inches. But that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter on that 86-yard run by Kevin Ozolumba's second touchdown of the night. Clockers will kick off. Get a quick word from our sponsor, I think. More Brady Bunch trivia. And uh, hopefully an exciting clocker fourth quarter when we come back. Ollie LaRoe to start the fourth quarter. Kicks towards the sideline. Staying in bounds. This is going to be trouble for the Lakers if they have to fall on it on the six yard line and they're going to call a late hit. It's, it's 15 yards. You can't really blame the ref because the play's dead. Right. The guy fell on it. The clock no, stops. No need. Yep. So it's still a net positive for the clockers as the Lakers take over on their 21 yard line instead of the six. Yeah, both teams tonight have gotten the advantage of uh, some really nice rolls of kicks going from our right to left across your screen. Yeah, that was a nice kick by Ollie LaRoe. It, just able to skirt down the sideline without going out of bounds. So here we are. Fourth first, quarter. Yeah. yeah, first play of the fourth quarter. Canessa, he's hit as he throws, and there's interception number 14. Number 14 breaking it outside. Corey Paddleford still on his feet, crossing the field. He's finally brought down inside the 15. Huge turnover, great defensive play, a huge break there for the clockers. They'll take over in the Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef Red Zone, down one with 11.46 to go in the fourth quarter. I'm not sure who got in there in the backfield, but somebody disrupted Canessa on the throw. And uh, as Paddleford said, had eyes on that pass the whole way. Yeah, you called it, he saw it and was able to make a beat on the ball. Solid return, so the clockers take over inside the red zone first and 10 at the 14 yard line into the gunk formation handoff to Zalumba dancing up the middle for positive yards still churning still effort finally brought down right around the 11. good call by you he was he was dancing he saw there was nothing that way very patient looking for the hole he is absolutely making the most of his opportunities. Any any small gap, any sliver of daylight, and he's finding it right now. Second and five for the Clockers at the Laker 10-yard line. Atherton under center. Fakes the pitch, keeps it himself, rolls up the middle. Brought down after a short game. Hey, are we making an adjustment to move the mic up or no? Seems really tight. That was we tick under 11 minutes to go. Clockers with a third and five on the eight yard line. Four down territory as they just gonna are ask lacking, you lacking the kicker. <clears throat> There's a pitch to Amaral, holds on to it this time. Gets down, right and he's still going, end. he's in the end zone. Quan Amaral puts the clockers up. 18 to 13 with 10.25 to go. As the clockers capitalize on the Paddleford interception. First lead of the night for the clockers. They're up 18-13, pending this two point conversion attempt. And although you don't see it on the stat sheet, that gunk offense where they took the ball down before the fumble, that just wears you down. Mm -hmm. and, and you're starting to see this uh, Laker defense seeing the signs of that. Getting pushed around. 
Okay, Rudis will split wide at the top of your screen, Rossi at the bottom. It was a limb in the backfield with Atherton. He tries to get it to him, passes deflected before it ever reached. So another two point conversion dashed to the side. Clockers up 18 13, 10 25 to go. But that would have been a big two pointer right there. So this game's had a little bit of everything turnovers on both sides, big plays. Absolutely, well now the clockers are the first lead of the night. This portion of Ashland High School football brought to you by 126 Storage. Of course, right there on Route 126. Family owned and operated. Michael Caine? Michael Caine, the actor? I don't know. <laughs> He's in everything. <laughs> Michael, Michael Campbell knew him. No. 126 storage, wide range of storage unit sizes. They also store cars, boats, and RVs. Be sure to check their website for special offers and coupons. Temperature control? Yep, climate control. Climate control. Not far from WACA World Headquarters on Butterfield Drive. Clockers kicking off here with 11.25 to go. Five point lead. Maybe have the Lakers back on their heels a little bit. They got 11 on the field now. <laughs> In a little disarray with their unit. Got the right number, another. And handled nicely. That was a little dicey there. Short off. Lucas Tremblay, the <laughs> senior for the Lakers. You know, I should have better be able to say the name of that school a little bit better, Appanequit. <laughs> right. I got it right yet? Not what not do, what do you got? Aponiquit? Aponiquit, okay. Aponiquit. I have a niece and nephew or alumni of that school. Oh really? That's right. Samantha and Noah Leolis. <laughs> so Canessa hands it off to Jolly. Fumble! Not sure if he got it back. He did initially. They're but pointing you know. Ashland way. That's where the binoculars come in handy. Okay, one of the one of the refs is pointing Ashland way there. <laughs> yeah, if he fumbled it forward and kind of fell right on top of it. Fortunate break as they get three yards, brings up second and seven. Another hand up to Jolly. Oof. A little more space as he hammers. Well, he got a little bit of speed yeah. going there. It was just a punishing blow. Yeah, it was either Amaral or Mermelstein who took the brunt of that hit. Okay, first down for the Lakers. Clock continuing to run here. 9.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Clockers up 18-13, but Lakers starting to mount a drive just shy of the 50. Lakers like to get up there and snap the ball quick. This time it's Lundgren. Picks up about three right to midfield. <clears throat> Lundgren reminds me of the Lundegaard character from a movie. Uh, Fargo. Did you ever see Fargo? I saw Fargo a long time ago. Dark. Oh, you got to see it again. Dark movie. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dumas, uh, I believe that's who it was. Tackled by Early and maybe Mermelstein and uh, Ozawumba. Dupress. Dupress. My apologies. So it brings up a third and a long four. Lakers into clocker territory on the 47 yard line. Different back, getting the hand off this time. Brought down short by Nick Bloomer. Another big tackle for Nick. They hand it off to Elijah Barlow. Is 
maybe his first carry of the night. Number 20, fourth and two. Lakers taking a lot of time with this play call. See if they have to take a timeout. Hands it off to Jolly, gets plenty of room, breaks it to the outside, nothing but daylight in front of him, switches the ball to the outside, and he runs it into the end zone. 45 yard touchdown run by Jolly. So the clocker lead short-lived as Lakers take a 19-18 lead pending this uh, extra point or two-point conversion, whatever they choose to go with. Yeah, one of the Lakers down on the field with a, take, as we take an injury timeout. So I'm seeing in the comments, Kerry, we really appreciate you sticking around with us, watching this uh, the whole game with us here tonight. And of course, Kerry, a, a representative here locally with Technoplex Healthcare, and uh, he's asking that uh, we start calling them Technoplex touchdowns. And I'm gonna go one better. I think we're gonna start calling them Technoplex two-point conversions as well, because I am a huge fan of alliteration. All right, well, hopefully that makes them a little bit more successful. Do, can we call, we'll, we'll only refer to it when it's when successful. It right, of course. Out on the failed attempts. And read our, our little blurb, Technoplex Please. Healthcare. Today's sports coverage brought on WACA TV, sponsored in part by Technoplex Healthcare. Technoplex Healthcare leverages its world class materials and science knowledge to deliver better patient outcomes by designing and manufacturing products that allow for less invasive procedures, reduce pain, enable faster healing, and safer drug delivery. Technoplex Healthcare. Proud to support Ashton Athletics and wishes everyone a successful 2024-25 season. Okay, so we're about ready to get back underway here. Fourth quarter action, clockers down 19-18, just over seven minutes to go. I want to give another uh, big thank you to our crew tonight, Luis Miranda, Nick Cunningham, Mackie Kotob, Brady Montesino, Jeff Hall, and Paul Bowden. And uh, actually, I want to do a quick reminder for folks watching at home, either live or on demand. Uh, we are always uh, in the market for announcers, camera operators, editors. If you have any interest, or if you're a national resident, you have any interest in video production and sports production, have a child in the Ashland school system, drop us a line. Easiest way to reach me is josh at wacatv.com. And Canessa hands it off to Jolly. And he fails the two-point conversion as well. He was met by three or four clockers right at the line. Another beautiful defensive play by the clockers tonight, really keeping this a tight game. Now just one point with 7.09 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's rare that you see three attempts at the two-point conversion and all failed. It makes you I mean, appreciate years past where we've we've had a good run of kickers. And even Aaron Wolf is excellent, but obviously he's injured. But we've had uh, John Giglia, mm -hmm. Andrew, Andre Agostinelli, excuse oh, me. Agostinelli, yeah. Agostinelli, Mr. Automatic. <laughs> well, that's, the, a, uh, that's a nickname you want as a kicker, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Helped us on the way to that Super Bowl run. He kicked two field goals in the in one of the playoff games against the Rockland Bulldogs. That's a rare feat that you see at the high school level. So Lakers coming off a successful touchdown and unsuccessful two point conversion about to kick off to the clockers. We were looking to put some more points on the board, try and retake the lead just for the second time tonight. Big plays all around that 45 yard run by Jolly. Reels, a little trouble where the ball's loose. <clears throat> but good coverage there, fallen upon by Clocker teammate. Clocks will start with the ball first and 10 around their own 27.
Henry, uh, excuse me, Josh Lambert, number 55, falling on the ball for the Clockers. And the scoreboard just went out. <laughs> As the Thanks officials take officials a, call a timeout. Time out. It just, feels just, a little bit like the scene in Airplane. I was, just gonna, I was saying the line. Just, <laughs> just, just kidding. And then I was going to ask. Oh, you. my goodness. Rob, we share, we share a brain. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, what a classic. Yeah. All right. We're back. No, we're not back. We have uh, it's 1918 with 7. 709 to go is the last I saw. Yeah. Before the kickoff. So let's take a quick look around uh, Clocker Nation, fall sports, okay? Boys soccer off to a hot 5-2-1 and one start. They were riding a four-game winning streak until a 3-1 loss to Dover Sherborne yesterday. They head to Medway on Tuesday and then host North High School here on Wednesday. And, and Rob, where are they ranked right now at the MIAA? They are uh, number four in Division Three. Excellent. And excellent. we're back underway. They got the scoreboard fixed. Gunk offense. Ozalumba. Just keeps churning. And he's still going. <laughs> Almost able to break out of the scrum, but he gets six yards on there. And again, I just want to point out a great job of protecting the football. Exactly. So when key. you get spun around like that, a lot of times, yeah. I mean, he's getting pushed and pulled, not just by the opponent, but by his own teammates. They're trying to push him forward. A lot of stress there, but uh, Ozalama so strong protecting the football. Pitches to him again, up the middle, he's got some room, breaks free for a moment. It's a first down for Kevin Uzalumba and the Clockers as they approach midfield with 6.26 to go in the fourth quarter, Clockers down by one. Unbelievable, it looked like he had the hold to the left, but he saw something to the right and whatever he did was definitely the right decision. Picked up about 15 yards on that pitch. And again, Rob, to a point you made a little bit earlier, it looks like this Laker defensive line is starting to wear down just a little bit. It was a Lumba getting some major yards here. Pitches to him again up the middle. He's making him work for it, that's for sure. He probably picked up a yard or two before he got pushed backwards. Even more. Looks like they might give him three. Oh, is Atherton. That's not good. He's trying to get off the field so they don't have to burn a timeout. So Soderberg in to quarterback now. Owen Wolfram just ran in for the clockers as well. Clock is running. We're approaching five and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Clockers right about at midfield, their own 49. Second and seven. Juan Amaral. <coughs> He's very close to a first down. Yeah. Tiptoes his way for about five yards. Brings up third and one. Where is number three on the sideline? Do you see him? No, I've lost track of him. Soderbergh seems like he might be a limping just a little bit as well, but he's heading back out. They're working on Athena right down there, right, almost right in front of you, Rob. He just popped back up on his feet. Okay. So Soderbergh leading the offense to the line of scrimmage here. It's, it is third down, third and inches. Just QB sneak right up the middle. We've got a flag on the play. The Clockers had the first down quite easily. But clock stops here. We've got a false start called against the offense. So that'll push him back five. Stay third down. Clock stops with 4.35 to go. A lot of frustration on Coach McKay's face there. Absolutely. I mean, they had the first down. They were right yeah, where they wanted to be. And it was the perfect play. Mm -hmm. So well, when they need five, six yards, who do they give it to, Rob? It's got to be us Olympia here, right? Either or. Maybe Amaral? Could be Amaral. It is to Ozalumba. Took a step backwards, pushed ahead. He's gone. He, he is broke gone. into the outside. And Ozalumba with his third touchdown of the night. No flags on the play. And the Wizard of Oz has done it again. Just incredible effort again by Ozalumba breaking through the pack at the line and suddenly burst through down the far sideline. 
for a clocker touchdown that will put them up 24-19 with 4.02 to go in the game. 45 yard run. So I think they made the right choice between Thunder and Lightning. Are you saying they one. chose I don't know who they wisely. chose. Which they chose wisely. wisely. Now there's a reference there. There is absolutely getting. a reference there. I can't believe that you can like quote Brady Bunch up and down and you can't get that movie reference which is much more recent than the Brady Bunch. I may have even used it before with you. We'll get to it after this two-point attempt. They're definitely trying a different formation here. This is almost a classic eye yeah, with Soderberg. split receivers. Amaral fakes the hand to Amaral. He's in. Two First two-point conversion of the night for the Clockers. Couldn't come at a better time. The Technoplex. Technoplex two-point conversion. Soderberg to Amaral. Clockers up 26-19 with 4.02 to go. Okay, Rob, if you can't get the you have chosen wisely reference, I will throw it out to our YouTube audience. Please do. Led by Kerry Turner of Technoplex Healthcare. I want to see uh, some participation <laughs> on the, by uh, the opponent. Yeah, I don't know what Laker we have to fans. do to get a little more action here from our YouTube audience. <laughs> Ozalumba with his third touchdown of the night, his shortest of the three. Right. How many did that one go for, Rob, roughly? 45 yards. Unofficially 45 yards. Tacking on to his first touchdown went for 60 plus. 62, I believe. And the second one was 80 oh, plus. Yeah, right? 64 and, and 80, 86 on the last one. They had it on the 14 yard line. Ollie LaRoe gives it a big boot. Oh, nice look at that. Bounce oh. Towards the sideline. But inbounds and nothing uh, Jolly could do with that except uh, pick it up and run out of bounds. Clock stops at 3.59, so just missed another even minute stoppage. 3.59 to go in the game. Clockers up 26-19. And the Lakers will start off at their own 14 yard line. Celebration coach, Owen Lovely, making sure the team stays back. Devin O'Brien helping out as well. Doing what he can to cheer his team on from the sidelines with his injury. As there's a handoff to number 17, dropped in the backfield. I think it was Olumba was Devin the- Devin Dupras. Okay, I think it was Olumba was in, the, in on that action as well. And, and you brought it up before, and it goes, uh, it's definitely worth mentioning again, the, the, some of the tackles, that tackle that Ozalumba had at the end of the mm -hmm. half on the interception doesn't really show up in the stats, but that was huge. Absolutely. Just and it, an innocent little interception, and it almost was a disaster. So let's see if the Clockers can dial up another big defensive stop here. Getting late in the game now. Handoff by the Lakers, trying to bump outside. Slip tackle there and then driven out of bounds. Kind of a late shove in addition by Amaral. Does the job. Good job, Robbie Rudisill on defense. Just missed the tackle but able to uh, force him outside. And it was number nine, uh, set, uh, yeah, Quan Amaral. Not used to seeing him on defense. So. Oh, who's number nine? Quick shout out to some of our uh, YouTube audience checking in. <clears throat> Pamela Crudup. Good to have you. Yeah, go Clockers with a Z. I, I, love, I love the creativity there. And of course, Stephen Marks, my neighbor and friend. Good to see you on the broadcast as well. And I uh, hope Logan's doing a great job for you. My Logan, that is. Uh, assistant coaching for you on Saturday morning. Pitch to Jolly so. outside. He is close to a first down. Let's Amaral see if he got it. again on the tackle. Hey, we gotta go, we gotta go. They're going to move the chain. They are. Clock. Now a factor. 220 and counting. Clockers up by seven. You're right, Rob. The Lakers, they do run right up to the line. Two men in the back. Number one. 
Boomer sheds the block and over to help Amaral again. Okay, I thought Boomer was a little shaken up there, but he's okay, he's okay. Clock continuing to run here. Interesting, they're yeah. running the ball. Clock Sean is not stopping. Again. Yeah, they're gonna need one of those big, big plays like they had before. Rolling out, Lundrigan, but Hit immediately. Jose Lumba. That's how you stop that play. And we've got a timeout on the field. And Boomer's coming off this time. Could be a cramp. I think it's a cramp. With 1.31 to go, Clocker's up by seven. And uh, by the way, Rob, want to mention that Paul Bowden Great member of our crew has chimed in with the correct answer to the reference I made earlier. You have chosen wisely from what? Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So, Paul, I'm going to give you partial credit because there are like a billion Indiana Jones movies right. now. But from the original trilogy, you know, okay. when it was still really, really good movies. You know, of course, the one with uh, Sean Connery. And my, you know, I mean, Raiders is always going to have a special place in my heart, but Last Crusade is a close second for me. And unfortunately, because Paul works for WACA, <laughs> he doesn't get the car. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think what well, we're giving away a 1978 Chrysler Cordoba. I think my dad had a Cordoba at one point. <laughs> my mom did. <laughs> that was a big car, big car, with rich Corinthian leather. Who said that line? <laughs> it, it rings a bell and I just... Ricardo Maltabon. Oh, yes. Well, I knew he did the... the uh, Fantasy Island? Oh, okay. Play underway here. Knessa from behind, hit again. Did that hit the ground? Everyone's saying it hit the ground except well, of course, for the, the left. Ashley, the Let's Ashley see. called it. They're spotting it as a completion and a first down. Clock stops momentarily. It's running now. They move the chains. Minute 20 and counting now. See if they get set. They do. Canessa looking to throw again. Dangerous Water. over the middle. <laughs> Intended for Sear. That'll stop the clock, though, the incompletion. Minute 10 to go. Second and 10 for the Lakers. They're down seven. So this has been a heck of a game. Clockers finally went up 18-13 after trailing most of the game. The Lakers came right back to go up 19-18. Clockers answered with a three-minute drive, and the Lakers looking to score and go ahead on the last possession or tie the game or go ahead. Yeah, in the open, Rob, we refer to the Clocker season as topsy-turvy, and you can say much the same about tonight's game. Here's and the snap. Uh, Rolling, being chased down by Marloni. Has to let it go. Oh, it's a lump on the interception. <laughs> How many times can you say it? But once again, the Wizard of Oz, Kevin Ozalumba. Ozalumba having the game of his life. He's going to ice it for the Clockers. I don't think there's going to be any, uh, any competition for tonight's uh, silver award. The silver medal definitely has been wrapped up by Kevin Ozalumba. <laughs> so a minute two to go, Clockers up seven. Another forced turnover by the Clockers. They'll take over at their own 32. Unbelievable the way they were able to turn around the defense. Not just the, the turnovers, but they really Except for that one play they by really Jolly in the second up. half. Absolutely. Yeah, they held them to some short gains, a couple of losses, as they're still running it here. Ozalumba for four yards. Clock stops at 54.4 seconds to go as we get another timeout on the field called by the Lakers. We'll give one final thank you to tonight's title sponsor, Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef in Ashland, home of... Uh, what I would say, at least, the best roast beef in town. We're going to find out. We're going we're gonna, <laughs> to, well, we've had it before, sure. but we haven't had all of the roast beef. And we haven't had it at the new and improved Townhouse Pizza and Roast Beef, newly expanded in the shopping center there on 126. I think we're going to do a quick uh, spot from there one of these days. I, Paul wants to do yeah, that. So yeah. we'll check it out, be able to maybe 
show off the new uh, the new digs. And we should do. Uh, I can't really film from Technoplex. Not really much. Unless, yeah. I'm sure Carrie can dial something up for us. All right. Maybe we can film them all giving the touchdown sign so that we can run that every time the clocker score a touchdown the rest of the year. Another pitch to Ozalumba. Is he trying to go for four? <laughs> so another Let's clocker run, another timeout by the Lakers, now with 46.9 seconds to go. That's, that's a timeout. Oh, okay, timeout white, he signaled the wrong way. That makes more sense, it's the last timeout. Yeah, I just assumed it was called by the, uh, by the Lakers there. Yeah. So 46.9 seconds, do uh, some quick math. So it's 40 seconds for the play, so he's gonna kind of run around for two, three seconds. That'll bring up fourth down, and then same thing, two or three seconds, so. It should be in the bag. Okay, we also, while we have this timeout, want to give a final thank you to our final sponsor of the night, Mr. Handyman of Central Metro West. Be sure to check them out for uh, all your small and, and even large jobs around the house, Mr. Handyman of Central Metro West. Fully licensed and insured. Okay, here's a third down play for the clockers. There's Alumba dancing around a little bit. Atherton was under center there, and now we have a timeout called by the clockers. That's, that's Do they not have the right personnel out there? No, you know what it is? It's Coach McKay's way of saying, hey, the game's over. If you're going to pull that stuff and try and get the ball back with three seconds left, and then... I don't know. Yeah, Take the high road. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> there is no doubt that he was not thrilled about that. The game's over. So, again, just a quick... Programming note, our next broadcast here on WACA will be two weeks from tonight when the clockers are back here, 6 o'clock start time. And uh, Rob and I will be back together again doing play-by-play -play and pop culture trivia and dad jokes. And, uh, and we might even uh, yeah. <laughs> invite your friends. It's going to be a party. <laughs> well, he hands it off to Amaral. Stay in bounds. Oh, that was a tough pull down. Clock does continue to run. Well, they signaled it should run. It is That's not running. Well, whether they first down, move the chain, <coughs> then it'll start. There and it goes. They don't have goes. to snap the ball. It might be a 35 second clock. Uh, nope. That, that is going to do it. Clockers not even in victory formation. They are in victory huddle here along the sideline. And I hearken back, as I love to do, <laughs> I love to hearken. Yes, hearken uh, away. To the turnover as Aponiquit was heading to the end zone. They fumbled through the end zone when they were leading 7 nothing, And I said that could turn the season around. The season. It certainly turned the game around. Oh, absolutely. It was turning the game around. But I said it could turn the season around. And this was, this was a different Clockers team that you saw in the, in the second half. Oh, they came, yeah, completely different team. Really tightened things up on defense, both with the big plays, the interceptions, a fumble like recovery in there somewhere, I believe. And, uh, but again, just other than that one long play by Jolly, uh, really cut down on, on long gains, long chunks at a time that the Lakers were doing all over the place in the first half. Yeah, so, I mean, the scoring the scoring summary was uh, we we had Kwani Amaral with a touchdown, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, but the highlight of the night was the three long touchdowns. The first one by Kevin Ozalumba from 62 yards, a little little pass play into the flat. He broke a tackle and took off down the sideline. Yeah, he and the right sideline became great friends tonight. Wasn't it? Yeah, it seemed like every <laughs> play was that way. And uh, second touchdown of the night for Ozalumba was 84 yards, I believe you called it. 80, 86. 86 it was, the, yeah, they took the ball on the 14-yard line after the kickoff, and Ozalumba on the handoff again broke it out to the right side, and nobody was able to catch him. Third touchdown of the night was Amaral's. 
And the last touchdown was uh, Kevin Ozalumba, 45 yards going the other way from the Gunk offense. So your silver, your silver medal award winner tonight? Well, because he had the interception. <laughs> and a lot of good tackles. And a lot of good tackles. And, oh, by the way, three long touchdown runs. <laughs> yeah. I love how you set that up, Rob. Exactly. So it's Kevin Ozalumba with the silver medal tonight. Congratulations. But an overall great team effort. Again, the clock is a little shorthanded uh, you know, on defense, certainly in the kicking game. They were struggling to convert two-point conversions tonight until the last one, and the one that counted the most, came up big in the clutch. And I have to give one shout. Totally not football-related, but I was looking at the articles that come through Metro West. Mm -hmm. A golf shout-out. Um, I think it's Rebecca Kriegsman. Hang on. Hold on. Rebecca Kriegsman, I believe it was, broke the clocker school record with a four under 29 over nine holes in a Tri-Valley victory over Millis and Norwood. Fantastic. Ashland as a team, they set a team record shooting at 224, but four under over nine holes, Rebecca Kriegsman. So Congratulations, Rebecca. Huge wanted accomplishment. Wanted to get that in before the end of the, end of the night. So. Sure. So, again, your final tonight here on the Plateau, Clockers 26, Lakers 19. You've been watching Ashland High School football on WACA, presented tonight by Tannhaus Pizza and Roast Beef of Ashland. For Rob Silver, I'm Josh Abrams saying thanks for watching. And good night and go Clockers.